Hi, welcome to Flash Instruction. I'm going to show you how to tween, uh, which is basically telling the computer a beginning point and an end point for an item to move, and it does the in-between work. That's why it's called tweening. The most important, two most important things to remember. Number one, objects you want to tween, you need to make a symbol. Number two, you can only tween two symbols per layer. That's really important. If you forget to do that, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So remembering that only one symbol per layer can be tweened will save you a lot of headaches. Before we start, I think I want to use a background stage color other than white. So I need to get to the document properties, which are not down here presently. But if I go and choose the selection tool and then click to select nothing, you can see that I now have the document properties here and I can click this and I think I'll go black. So I have layer one that I'm going to be using. This is just a hidden, actually I'll show you it now. I've put the instructions here so we can refer to them and I've hidden them. So when I click this spot underneath the eye, we can see some instructions that I made. Um, let me just try to move that. So the first step is to draw an image and then to make it a symbol. So I'm going to hide these again and go back to this layer and I'm just going to make a circle. Before I draw the circle, I'm going to check on my properties. I'm going to have a stroke thickness of three and that's going to be green and then my fill is blue. If I double click that, I can change my stroke, my fill color or my stroke color or both. I can make my stroke thickness larger and that's the ball I'm going to animate. So I've drawn it. Now I need to make it a symbol. I can do that by pressing F8 and then I name it and I'm going to write name it circle. You'll keep everything as a movie clip symbol for now. Later on we might use buttons. Um, I rarely use graphic because setting it to movie clip is generally the better choice to make. So now I'll click OK. And then I'm going to uncover, I'm going to move it to, I'm going to move it actually off the stage. So let me scroll up, you can see that. I'm going to move it off the stage because I'm going to animate it so it comes down. So I'm going to uncover the instructions again. We've done this already and we've done this already. And I've actually just positioned it where I want it to start. Now I need to create a new keyframe further on the timeline. So I'm going to come up here to 30. Um, actually, I'm going to go to 24. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're currently animating at 12 frame, frames per second. So if I set a keyframe at 24, it means it will take two, two seconds for my animation to take this path. Uh, and it will look a little slow, but we're going to play with that after, so I'm going to go to 24 and hit F6 to make a new keyframe. If we look at my instructions again, they say position the image where you want it to end. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to find my ball. I'm actually going to zoom this out so you can see on and off the stage at the same time. So my last keyframe, I want the ball to end here. And then if we look at the instructions again, and let me zoom in so you can see those. Oops, that was a little too much. So right click between those keyframes on the timeline and select create motion tween. And I do create motion tween and I'll zoom out again. There's a few ways to preview your tweet, your animation. You can either, I'm going to hide the instructions, you can scrub um, you're only seeing the outline moving because when I came up here to scrub I accidentally hit this. So let me scrub again without a, without only showing outlines. So that's my animation. You can hit the enter key. You can also do control enter. And that shows you the animation. You can see it's kind of slow. Um, you can also see that the instructions flashed on. We're, we're going to ignore those for now. Um, suppose I want my ball to then bounce here and then go here. I just continue the process that we observed in the directions. So 
I don't have to draw another image and I don't have to make it a movie symbol. I just have to follow from position where I want it to start. Actually, it's already there. I just have to create a new keyframe, reposition it, retween. New keyframe, position it, um, new, create tween. So here's where it's going to start from. So let's say I only go 12 more frames this time. Hit an F6 key. Move it to where I want to go. Tween. I'm going to go 12 more. So that brings me to 48. New keyframe. F6. Position it to where I want to go next. And then create the tween. So here's what I have now. Then up then down. Okay, that is far too slow overall. If you need everything to speed up um, uniformly, the easiest way to speed something up is to increase your frame per second. So if I increase this to 24, that means the original drop is only going to take a second and the two bounces are only going to take half a second because I did them at 12 frames each. So I'm going to highlight that and change it to 12 and run it again. You can see it's faster. Okay. Um, it might not still be fast enough. I wonder why that happened. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. Oh, because I, I undid what I did. So let me go to 24. Watch it again. Seems a little more realistic. Hmm. So I like 24 better. Um, it will look a little bit more realistic if at this point it squishes down. So I have the ball dropping from here to here. Typically when balls hit a surface, they compress a little bit. So if I click this keyframe, I can use this tool called the free transform tool and I can squish it. So when it ends, it will look like the ball's compressing. I don't have to do anything else because in this frame it's still normal. You hide those directions. In this frame it's squished. By this frame it will be back to normal. So let's see what it looks like. Control, enter. Squish. Oh, you can hardly even see the squish. Mm. But that's the idea. Let me see what happens. No, I don't want to squish it here, but I want to squish it here again. So control enter. You might be able to see it slightly, but it's going pretty fast. Um, that's a technique we can use. I'm going to actually, I want it to keep doing the same thing. So I'm going to go 12 more frames to 60, new keyframe, bring it over here, unsquish it. Um, I actually accidentally created a second keyframe. So over here, I want it to be up here and unsquished. And then at 72, I want it to be back down here and a little bit squished. And then, uh, why didn't that work? Undo, undo, undo. Okay, 72, I forgot to create a keyframe by hitting F6. So now I bring it down. And now I squish it again. And then I'm going to go to 84, make a new keyframe. Oops. Bring it up. Unsquish it. And then I'm going to make a new keyframe at 96. New keyframe. And I'm actually going to have it bounce off the stage so it actually doesn't matter if I am squished. Now I need to, all of these, make a motion tween. And then when I enter, ding, 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 ding. So it's bouncing. Okay. It's not ideal. It might not be fast enough again. If I kick this up to 36, it's going to get faster. So let's see what 36 looks like. Maybe 36 is a better keyframe option. Um, so let's say that now... I want to have a different shape animating at the same time. So 
I'm gonna name this layer ball. I'm gonna make another layer by clicking this. I'm gonna name this square. I'm gonna go all the way back. Whoops, I have to slide back on my... I don't want this to start at the same time. In fact, I'm not gonna have it start until 36. So I can come to frame 36 um, and create a keyframe. The other thing I don't want to accidentally do is draw on the wrong layer. So I'm gonna lock both of these layers. That is a really good idea. You should always get in the habit of locking and unlocking your layers because when stuff gets on the other gets on the wrong layer, it causes huge problems. Um, and you'll learn by experience how to recognize when it's on the wrong layer. But just try to remember for now, lock layers so you don't get on the wrong layer accidentally. I'm now going to hold my mouse button down on the oval tool and choose the rectangle tool. I'm going to choose some new colors. I think I'll make it striped inside and purple on the outside. Oh, I just had purple on the outside. So let me make red on the outside. And then I'm going to draw, let's see, I think I'll bring this one up from the bottom. So I'm going to draw it here. Now if you remember, I'm going to show you the instructions again. Um, so I've drawn the image. I have to select the whole thing and make it a movie clip symbol. That I do with F8. So let me go back to this frame. It's already all selected. If I hit F8, I get my convert to symbol box and I can type square. Um, and then my instructions say position it where I want it to start. I've done that. I'm going to start it off on the bottom. Now I have to create a new frame. I'm going to do this, I'm going to go 12 frames from 36. So I'm going to click out to 48 and I'm going to create another keyframe. I'm going to position it where I want it to go. Then I can right click and motion tween. So now you're going to see this happen. And this, the square just stays there because I don't have it tweening anymore. And it stays there for the life of the timeline until it reloops. Okay. So, I want to show you some other features that happen in tween properties. So right now I have a frame clicked in between these properties. If I come down here, you can see that the tween is here. There's an ease button, which I'll talk about in a moment, but what I really want to show you is rotate. If I tell this to rotate clockwise once, here's the effect it has. So. It looks like a pretty fast rotation. If I turn it up to three, you almost didn't even see it rotate because of the way the timing works. Let me see what it looks like at two. So that's that's rotating also. So that's the rotation. Um, that's the rotation character characteristic or property. I'm going to make another tween to 46 so I put a keyframe here. Let's see I have it bounce over to here and I'm going to this time I'm going to show you what ease in and out do. So first I'm going to create a motion tween then I'm going to put the ease all the way up to 100 so it's a positive ease. Let's see if we can notice what happens. Okay so it might be hard to see, but it slows down. I'm going to make it easier for you guys to see. So I'm going to have this keyframe start over here so that there's a longer distance between here and here. So it will go from the bottom to that part of the screen to that part of the screen. Watch it carefully at the beginning and end of this leg of the tween. Okay, it slows down at the end of the tween. That means a positive ease makes it ease into place at the end. Watch what happens. I'm going to put another keyframe here. I'm going to slide it back to where it came from. But this time when I make the tween property, I'm going to make it, oh, not the rotate. I'm going to make it a negative ease. And as you probably guess, it starts slow and ends fast. So you can see that it's really fast at the beginning of end and not in between. So that's what easing does. I'm going to lock this layer and make one more layer. This time I'm going to draw a, tri draw a triangle. I'm going to have the triangle start here. So I do a keyframe 
To get a triangle, you got to go to the poly start, start tool. Before you 